Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel. Let's talk a little bit about the price trajectory of XRP because it continues to move with the market. Uh, XRP, I do not believe anyway, I do not believe it's going to be left behind despite uh, the, uh, the litigation between the SEC and Ripple. And on top of that, I still remain cautiously optimistic that we're going to see uh, a settlement within the next, you know, six, seven months, whatever it ends up being. Uh, th that seems more likely than actually going to trial, but you never know for sure, but that's what it certainly looks like to me. And so I, I want to talk about a few things. Um, so well, certainly, as I stated, the trajectory, because look, like the call still from one notable trader, I, I, I mentioned before on the channel, he still believes in all likelihood in the short term, you're going to see XRP uh, hit about 46 cents. It, which, which is dependent on Bitcoin because look, Bitcoin leads the market unquestionably. But I also want to make sure since there are so many new people to crypto here, uh, I want to make sure that you are aware of, of how functionally how market cycles work, uh, how uh, large purchasers, institutions, whales, you know, whoever's got the real money. I, I want to make clear in this video uh, what they're doing uh, to, uh, to, well, a couple things. Some people would say that it's it's outright manipulation, even if it's not that. I just want to show you what the big money is doing in order to profit in this market. And I'll, I'll, I'll give you a little hint. It requires not using emotions to make buying and selling decisions. And also, there are multiple uh, notable figures in the space that are still calling for Bitcoin to exceed $100,000 this year, 2021. If that happens, I still believe XRP, even with the, you know, the, the, the scariness of the SEC versus Ripple suit hanging over everyone's head, uh, even with that, I, I still think it's going to move with the market. Even if, I'm not saying that this will happen, but even if it loses position in terms of market cap, look, XRP, we already know it trades sideways historically longer than any other cryptocurrency in the top 10, any other large, let's just say large cap. Maybe that is top 10. It depends on who you ask, actually. <laughs> Maybe that some would say top 20. But certainly out of the, any large cap coin, it's, uh, you know, it trades sideways longer. I don't know for sure why. I've just observed that for about eight years now, that's just what it's done. But then when it goes, it really goes. Um, now, I do want to be clear. I don't have a financial background of any kind. So uh, just understand I'm not offering financial advice and you should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say, right? I'm just an enthusiast. I'm no more special than you. And uh, I just think it's fun to talk about this stuff. And I run this YouTube channel purely as a hobby. That is all that it is. Because really, the way I've always looked at it is, look, I've got friends and family that own crypto, but they are not legitimately interested in it. I, I, I have no one in my real life that I could regularly talk to about this stuff. And so when I started this channel, I always just kind of wanted to run it and just, but it's like in a style of like how I would talk if I was sitting down with you having a beer on a patio somewhere. Uh, that, that's that's how I've always wanted to treat this because I find this stuff so genuinely fascinating. I don't know why I just do so I'm running with it. <laughs> but but hey, if you're listening to this video, you're, you're probably not far off from me, right? Um, now as I record this, XRP is at 27.1 cents. Uh, Bitcoin, uh, $32,083. Market cap, $939 billion, And Bitcoin dominance at 63.57%. And so what we've been seeing over the last uh, few days in particular has been primarily consolidation. Now, I do want to point this out, and this is just more proof XRP is moving with the market. If you look to the right, I'm going to continue to point this out. This is the, these are the top 10 coins. If you look at the weekly chart here, if you have if you have eyeballs, you can verify this for yourself. It's not that the charts literally look necessarily exactly the same, and there can be outliers, and always throw Tether out because it's a stable coin. But, but in particular, over the last three days, do you see the low point for, for all those cryptocurrencies out of the top 10 over the last few days, do you see how they all happened at the exact same time, including XRP? XRP is following the rest of the market, period. Everybody that wanted to get out because of the scary news, by and large, they're out. And now it's just back to business as usual, uh, except for it's at a more suppressed price because uh, people did get shaken up. And I don't disparage anybody for getting out, and I acknowledge it's more risky to hold XRP now, but does nothing to change my conviction. I'm going to continue to hold. I would I would have a tough time sleeping at night if I didn't have exposure to XRP. So you can call me crazy because I acknowledge it's more risky, but I, I want that exposure because I have a feeling that everything's going to get straightened out in the end. And I think as a result, XRP will pop. But if I sold this out of fear and then things got cleared up, say there's a settlement and the market found out that there's a settlement between the SEC and Ripple and this thing takes off, because you saw what happened with the Ken token. I've been talking about that. Once it got regulatory clarity in October of last year, that thing 
ran up over 2,000% in fairly short order. And so, you know, I'm not saying XRP necessarily would go up 2,000% because it's a larger, it's a large cap coin and Ken was a small cap coin. Uh, so, you know, it just takes more money flowing in to do that. But you'd get, I believe, a tremendous multiplier effect uh, sooner than later. There'd just be a mad rush into it. I don't want to miss that because I personally believe that is in the cards here. Um, here's a tweet from Credible Crypto, and he still does believe in a likelihood that you're going to be seeing XRP at about 46 cents. But let me let me share with you this recent tweet. Uh, this is his most recent tweet uh, as I record the video anyway, having to do with uh, XRP. And he talks about Bitcoin too, but check it out. As expected, oh, I should mention this too for those of you that aren't familiar. I just get so used to it. Sometimes I forget to say basic stuff. Credible Crypto is a chart analyst. And an XRP holder, 98,700 followers. Now his, his Twitter handle is just blowing up like crazy. I enjoy following what he puts out. Anyway, uh, he wrote the following. As expected, we dropped down to daily demand and saw a nice reaction off of it. Where we go from here is largely dependent on whether Bitcoin is done correcting at this time or not. Should have more clarity on Bitcoin and therefore XRP tomorrow. And so he, I, he shares the same opinion as, as me, that XRP... Outside of the scary news, which did result in an independent drop uh, compared to the rest of the, the market, that's that's not hard to believe. You know, it's not hard to understand. Outside of that, though, he's saying the same thing I'm saying. XRP is following the rest of the market. I just showed you a chart. If you, have, I, I'm going to keep pointing this out too. If you have eyeballs, you can see this is indeed the case. Um, and then there was this tweet. Um, somebody's asking about a different cryptocurrency, EOS, and I, I don't want to get into that, but somebody put out a tweet indicating that um, they have a big bag and that it's, you know, it's it's basically been moving sideways. I don't track it, so I don't really know anything about that. I don't own it, uh, but said that the, the volumes are there, but there's no significant price movement as compared to some other projects. And so he's thinking about getting out of EOS. Now, my humble opinion, and again, this is not financial advice, for him or you or anybody, just anybody. But to me, you know, a lack of uh, upside price action when other coins are going is a very poor reason to get out of a cryptocurrency because you're chasing a green candle then. Ooh, shiny. Let's go get that one. Well, it's already pumped. It already did it. And then what's going to happen? You take your money out of EOS and then you put it in whatever's looking shiny at the time. And then eventually EOS pumps. And so Credible Crypto wrote the following. Rule number one, imprint this in your mind. The longer the consolidation, the greater the expansion. Very important point. Now, think about that. And what was I saying earlier on in the video? XRP historically trades sideways longer than you know other top 10 cryptocurrencies. It consolidates longer trading sideways, but then when it goes, it really, really goes. And so he's right. The longer it consolidates, when it goes, it's like really takes off. And so the strategy in general, and I may be indeed participating in this, even though I, for most of the last few years, uh, have been thinking that I would not want to do this. I'm actually thinking uh, what I'll do, and I actually have been purchasing a bunch of different uh, altcoins lately. Uh, well, I don't want to overstate it. I've been, I've been ordering a few different ones, but purchasing a few different ones rather. And so what I'm going to do <coughs> is let some of these things pump, which I think will happen inevitably during alt season, which isn't even here yet. It's, it's amazing to see the market cap we're seeing without it even here yet. Uh, I'm going to let them pump. And then once I've made notable profit, whatever the multiplier effect is, it doesn't matter, whatever I deem to be sufficient, I'm going to sell them. And you know what's going to happen when I sell them? They're going to keep moving up in price. And, uh, and that's because I, I can't time the top. I don't know. But I don't want to hold on to them too long. But I'm not going to beat myself up for not being able to time the top of a market. And then I'm going to take those profits... And then I'm going to put them in a cryptocurrency that isn't moving. Maybe it would be EOS. I'm not saying that it would. <laughs> but, you know, I, I don't know. I don't really know a whole lot about that. Um, but I'm just saying I'm going to put it somewhere where there isn't activity and then wait for the next one to pop. And, and so you understand, like, the way money historically has flowed in, it goes into Bitcoin first, then large cap coins, then mid cap coins, then small cap coins. And so this whole idea of, oh, mine's not moving right now. I'm uh, like, I'm a child and I'm impatient. <laughs> That's what I assume is, like, going on in their minds. <laughs> Um, you know, if that's the mentality, like that's exactly what is going to get you destroyed. And so I refuse to behave like that. That's what most humans do because emotions just lead people to think like that. And I'm going to not do that. But, uh, but yeah, so I'll just sit there. I'll wait patiently and not everything's going to pan out. I'm sure I think it's going to be very messy. 
Uh, but it's going to be messier for people that ch chase green candles, I believe. And so I refuse to do that. I'm not going to take money out of my core positions like XRP to go chase something. But after something has pumped, yeah, what the hell? It's alt season. I, I think I'm going to play ball. I'm going to see what the hell happens here. I've been tracking this stuff for over three years. Humans are going to act like humans. I'm well aware of what they do. So why not? Why the hell not? I'm just going to get oral. You know, like, and the reason I feel safe doing that is because like, even though I admit it's risky doing, doing anything like that, it's again, experience over the last three years, watching this stuff, understanding how humans behave. But in addition to that, keeping my core positions, my long-term bags, I am not going to, to do that with those cryptocurrencies like XRP, that one, I am super long. And I will start selling some along the way as it, as it eventually goes up in price, which I believe will happen. No guarantee, but I, I think it will. And then I'll just kind of hold the rest. I'm never going to sell all of my XRP, though. I'm going to be long as long as there is good reason to, which means as long as it's actually being adopted, ultimately, you know, with all the stuff with the SEC gets cleared up, that's the type of stuff that I'm talking about. Now, here's another tweet from Credible Crypto. And he wasn't talking about XRP here, but I wanted to, to, to cite this because I think it's relevant for XRP holders. Uh, this is how, he, and this is what he said in response to what that individual said about potentially selling his EOS bags. He wrote, this is how you get shaken out. The longer we sit still, the more big players accumulate, the less supply available when we start running. A lack of supply when the buyers begin to step in equals rapid price appreciation. The longer the consolidation, the greater the expansion. And so again, that's that's certainly true. Like if you're wondering why do we see these big pops in XRP price when it goes, there you go. That's the explanation of it. As far as why it consolidates longer, I'm not really sure. That's a fun conversation. I've talked about it a little bit on this channel. I've theorized, but suffice to say, it's just it's happening regardless. And that's why you see those big pops when it ultimately goes. Um, what's next here? Oh yeah, check this out. Quant analyst who predicted Bitcoin rise to $100,000 says Bitcoin whales quietly fueling crypto correction. Well, how about that? The CEO of on-chain analysis firm CryptoQuant says Bitcoin whales uh, are fueling the, king, the crypto king's move to the downside. In a series of tweets, CEO reports that significant inflows into exchanges from large investors began on Wednesday which suggests the large Bitcoin holders were ready to sell. Despite the pullback, uh, the CEO remains convinced that Bitcoin is on its way to $100,000. And here's a quote. Whales are depositing Bitcoin to exchanges. No doubt it'll hit $100,000 this year. But in the short term, if we wouldn't see any significant buying pressure from Coinbase Pro, I think Bitcoin would be bearish. And so what happens is there, some of them are taking profits, right? And then the price goes down. Retailers panic sell. Um, you know, because there's, there's more available in the market. And so people are panic selling because the price goes down. And then what do they do? They come back in and repurchase their position on the cheap. This is what the smart money is doing. And they're not doing it based on emotions. You know, they're, 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 they're trading, sure. Most traders lose money. I'm just, I'm just saying this is what the big money does. And, and if you have enough of a, an asset... Uh, you know, have enough money in it in, in illiquid markets, which, you know, the crypto asset class is, look, I understand we're talking about a trillion dollar market cap. It's a very illiquid market class, uh, uh, asset class rather in general, especially if you talk about some of the smaller cap coins, you know, you know, a few million dollars, this or that, some of the tiniest ones. Well, anybody can come in just about and start manipulating price. You got a little bit of money. It doesn't take that much. So just be aware like that, that can happen. And so that's why for me, having a long-term mindset and not acting like everybody else is key and not responding emotionally. I, res I refuse to respond emotionally and I only invest when I'm willing to lose because I don't know for sure how any of this is going to pan out. There's no way to know. You know, I have, I have suspicions and I'm acting on them, but uh, there's no way to know for sure. Um, and then there was uh, this, uh, this article as well. Believing, not seeing, institutions still predict $100,000 Bitcoin price. Uh, despite Bitcoin price cooling off in recent days, with the premier cryptocurrency currently hovering around the $32,000 mark, it is still showcasing strong technicals as well as a 30-day price gain of nearly 40%. Uh, not only that, but even since its recent dip, which has seen the digital asset fall from its recently established all-time high of around $42,000 to its present value, the top crypto is still in the green over the last 12 months exhibiting a value spike of nearly 300%. <laughs> Guys, long term. <laughs> like, seriously, I don't know how to stress that. Like, that is so important to me personally. 
Anyway, uh, in this regard, since the fourth quarter of 2019, uh, a number of traditional finance players have been predicting big things for Bitcoin, especially as governments all over the world continue to print money in the form of economic stimulus packages, leading to fears of inflation becoming more prevalent, but also of a looming economic disaster that could potentially result in a global recession of unprecedented proportions. And indeed, regardless of whether that or not that's, um, you know, it's a bunch of whether or not it's fear mongering, people are behaving differently because of the excessive printing of fiat currencies. To me, that seems undeniably true. Now, uh, earlier this year, American megabank JP Morgan uh, Chase's strategy team, led by Nicholas Pandagirjigalu, I guess is how you, it's probably how you say that. I think I pretty much nailed that one. Uh, Pana, Pana so quit having a hard name, dude. Why can't you need, just be like John and like your last name be Smith? Like I, I could, I could rock that one. I could totally rock that. Quit having a hard name. It really grinds my gears. People having hard to say names. Anyway, uh, so Nicholas Pandager dog yeah, claimed that a theoretical target of $146,000 plus could be sustainable for Bitcoin by the end of 2021. Uh, pushing the narrative that the digital currency seems to be a prime candidate for replacing gold as a long-term store of value, especially for a budding base of younger, more tech-savvy investors. And so it's, it's just it's so interesting to see the legacy financial system be like, yeah, this thing's just, it's it's going to be huge. <laughs> after after fighting it for, you know, over a decade, and then to see this, it's, it is cool, though. It's like, this is the type of thing in 2017, you, you didn't see this. You had Jamie Dimon of, of uh, JP Morgan saying that Bitcoin literally was a fraud. That's what he used the word fraud. And I was sitting there in 2017 after I, I learned enough, and I was like, I don't think that they're going to be saying that in the future. Wait till they're making money off of it. And sure enough, fast forward, now it's 2021. What do you know? JP Morgan, yeah, this formerly Bitcoin the fraud. <laughs> it's going to go to $146,000. Okay, thanks, JP Morgan. Glad to have you on board here. Welcome to the party. All right, I'll, I'll wrap up there, though. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambeau.